I have a small but meaningful collection of vintage postcards. Here's one of them. This is a statue erected in 1889. It's 81 feet tall of solid granite. It's called the National Monument to the Forefathers in honor of the Mayflower passengers. It's in Plymouth, Massachusetts, and on it are depicted faith, morality, education, law, and lady liberty. That is, those key essential Christian virtues that had so important a hand in the foundation and the shaping of these United States. Now, today happens to be National Day of Prayer, and I met with a bunch of believers, fellow pastors and followers of Jesus at the Collier County Courthouse today around midday. And we offered prayers, and we sang worship songs, and we got together in little clusters, little groups to enjoin our spirits and pray for the family and for the churches in our area and for other things. You know, it always strikes me on days like National Day of Prayer, how do we properly reconcile ideas like patriotism and pilgrimage? That is, how do we be good citizens in the world and do our part to influence and shine the light of Jesus Christ in these great United States or wherever we find ourselves having been born or placed in the world? Along with the idea that we are pilgrims passing through this life. You know, remember, we must keep our ultimate hope, our trust, our, our faith anchored firmly in heaven as we walk along the path which will take us there. But along the way, God does encourage us, in fact, commands us to shine the light of Christ, to share the hope of God's love and grace and truth and the gospel with the world. So how do we reconcile the idea of patriotism and pilgrimage. Now, here are two passages of Scripture that I find very helpful, and perhaps you will too today. And then perhaps, after I read them, you'll share with me in a simple prayer uh, for revival among the churches and revival in this land. Remember, in times like this, as G.K. Chesterton quipped, in times like this, there have always been times like this. Even though this time may be particularly unsettling, settle your heart on the Word of God. Anchor your hope in heaven. And then as we pass through, let's simply be what God has called us to be. Listen to this from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall it be salty? How shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do a people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. God is calling us wherever we are. Whatever citizenship we maintain in this world to positively impact and influence with Christian virtues like faith, education, law. Those things depicted on this monument like Lady Justice. We are called to do those things to have an influence in the world. God uses us. We, we must not withdraw entirely like ascetics, like monks in caves, hiding out from the world if we would be a proper influence in the world. And yet, we must guard the heart, keep the heart from worldly affections, remain unstained, as the Bible says, keeping our affections solely with the love of God. And then letting that be translated to love for one another as fellow believers. And then sharing that love and that light and that truth in the world. It's a simple formula so long as we guard the heart. Now, listen to this passage from the book of Philippians, chapter 3 and verse 20. And remain rooted in this word. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it, we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our ultimate hope is heavenward, yet our call is to share the gospel, share the truth, and to be harbingers of salt and of light, to preserve things and add flavor, and to shine the light of the truth 
of the Word of God. Won't you join me today? Let's pray for this nation and for the churches and for the families in this land. Mighty and Heavenly Father, we praise you on this national day of prayer. We ask God that those most chief and meaningful and godly virtues, which were woven into the foundational fabric, though having been lived out imperfectly, still present and meaningful. God, we pray for those ideas to be rebirthed, to be renewed, to be remembered in this land. God, we're praying for revival in our land that we would see another time of awakening in the hearts of people. We're praying for the families, God. Won't you pour out life and love and blessing and empower men to stand firm on the word of God as they lead their families arm and arms with their wives and for children not to be disobedient but to be given a spirit of respect so that the family unit might function in order with the promises and the precepts and the principles given in your word. God, strengthen the local churches to support men and women and families. Mighty and everlasting God, don't allow the light of the church to dim. Rather, may we be those who bring the mighty light of the love and the truth of God through the gospel that saves men's souls. And then through a revival, won't you bring about a new day in this great land of ours? Wonderful and everlasting God, we pray these things to the glory of the Father and the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, our Redeemer, the King of Kings, Amen. God bless you today on this National Day of Prayer. Remember, stay anchored. Our hope is in heaven. Stay rooted. The truth is in the Word of God. In times like this, there have always been times like this. Let us stand firm on the truth and continue our pilgrimage towards heaven. God bless you today. Amen.